I'm getting ready to make a Valentine's decoration for my dining room shelf or my table. I'm not really sure where I'm going to put it. So I thought I would kind of walk you through um, the steps that, that I'm doing to make this craft. These are one by fours. They come in like eight feet lengths. My husband had cut these for me to make the pumpkins um, for Thanksgiving. And these are the ones I had left over. All I did was cut them down. I want to say this is about four inches. Um, this was the size I had. I sanded them very lightly. Not, you know, don't go crazy. It doesn't have to be super smooth. And then the first thing I did was I put a coat of stain um, on the wood. I don't like to get my hands dirty, so I always have paper towels. I just used this sample of pecan stain from Cabot. These are like three or four dollars at Home Depot. I have several different colors. This is just, just the one I had on hand. So that is the first step. Make sure you have your wooden blocks. I really, I rounded off the edges. I don't know if you can see that. And then the first step is to just put a light coat of stain. You're not going to see this really um, once you put the paint on. It's mostly for when you sand it down to make it look rustic. Instead of seeing this, you know, unfinished wood, you'll see this nice dark stain, which will give it um, an appearance of age. Um, I apologize for all the noise. It happens to be rush hour, and I live kind of on a on a busy road, so I apologize for the noise, but I wanted to make sure to show you how to do this. So I now have all four blocks stained on all sides. Um, I just used this old foam brush. I tend to wash these out and reuse them, but once you put stain on them, it's really not worth it. So I just used this little foam brush and paper towels to dry it off. And I wanted to show you this quick little tip. Um, I have my stain under here and I need to seal the top. So you know how sometimes it gets, the, you know, the paint or stain gets in that little groove? I just put a paper towel or something over top of it and now I'm going to try and do this with one hand, so bear with me. So the paper towel, when you hit it to close it, it keeps all that stain from splattering up on, on you. So that's just my little tip on how to keep um, paint and stain off of your clothes when you're resealing your jar. Okay, so now the next step is I'm just going to take this wide brush and I'm going to paint all of this. Now, I'm not going to do a full coverage. I mean, I'm probably going to put two or three coats on. I don't know if you can see Let me try one back here. Probably two or three coats just to cover up the stain because I don't really want to see the stain under the paint. I want to sand off some of this cream colored paint to expose the the darker colors. You can see that. And all I'm using is if you watch another one of my videos, let me see if I can show you this Valspar. It was a free sample. Um, it's just a satin um, paint that I got at Lowe's for free. So that is the next step is just to make sure that you cover the blocks with this paint with two or three coats. Okay, so I went ahead and I painted the blocks. I ended up just painting two coats over the stained layer, again using this little sample that I got from Lowe's. So the next step is to take a stencil, and I have these stencils I bought quite a while ago, and to just kind of use this as a guideline for your letters. Now, I made a big mistake when I started this. Um, I used a regular pencil, and you can see the pencil line through the paint Shouldn't be that big of a deal when I do this next step, which is sanding it, but in order to avoid that mistake, I'm going to use a red colored pencil, and then I'm just going to trace this onto the block. Now the stencil is a little big, but I'm just kind of using this as a guideline. What I'm going to do, line those up so I can kind of see, and then I'm just going to trace this lightly with this red pencil and make it fit onto the square, and then I'm just going to go ahead and paint it with this Americana Berry Red. I've had this for a long time in this brush, so that's the next step. Okay, so I got um, the X's and the O's painted on, and I actually did Love on the other side, so it's two-sided. So that's what it looks like, and now I'm getting ready to use my new Handy Dandy Craftsman um, tool that I got for Christmas and I'm just going to give these a sand and I'm going to pay close attention to the edges wherever you would normally see wear on something I'm going to sand more and I'm, uh, I'm going to try and do something about these uh, pencil marks 
Um, the next step after I sand is I'm going to then put a coat of stain to kind of antique them. So hopefully those pencil marks won't show. So on to the next step. I finished sanding and you can see now where the stain, I haven't wiped them off yet, the stain kind of shows through and gives it more of that antiqued, you know, it's been around for a while, not brand new from Target kind of look, which is what I was going for. So now what I have to do is I have to dust them all off, get all the sawdust off, and then I'm just going to use the same stain that I used as a base um, to put over it and then I'm going to wipe it off right away because I just want to kind of um, give it more of an antiqued look not really give it a super dark look so I will do that and I will show you when they're complete so here are the completed blocks I'm still outside so hopefully the light isn't too bad um, I've gone ahead and put some stain on them and wiped it off and I stained one side wiped it off stained the other side wiped it off um, you can still see the pencil lines a little bit they didn't come off as much as I had hoped um, but I don't really mind it too much. I think it gives it more of that antiqued look. Um, and it, I want it to look handmade. I do not want it to look store-bought. So there they are completed. I'll show you the XO side really quick. I'm probably going to use these as part of my centerpiece of my table. So once the stain has completely dried, I will show you how I display them um, in my dining room. Here are the finished blocks on my table. I have these um, soup cans that I had decorated for a friend of ours engagement party. They had flowers in them and I still had some of these left. And then this is actually the same one, it's just turned around. I had bought these little hearts at the dollar store and they just stuck right on. And there's another one. And these are just fake roses from the dollar store. I wanted a punch of that red color. The table runner is actually yard goods that I bought at Joann's. It's a yard and a half. The ends are finished. They're like heat sealed or something. Um, I do have to hem the two end edges, but I'm real happy with the table runner. And I'll just quick show you the shelves for Valentine's Day that I've decorated. Up top I have one of my globes that I collect and it says in um, chalk ink, you mean the world to me. Of course my birds. This was actually a sign that I had bought for Maureen, uh, my daughter, at a thrift store and she decided she didn't want it. She has a pink kitchen, I thought it'd be cute. So it was in my stash of stuff, so I put that up there. And then more birds. Here's the same tin that I used at Christmas, but now it has white hydrangeas in it. And then these are just cookie cutters. They were red, they were hearts, I thought they'd be cute. Um, the Be Mine is really the only thing that I purchased new. Actually, the materials are new. Um, this is what we're going to do at craft night with my girlfriends. It's basically made out of upholstery strapping and then um, glued to twine and I stenciled the Be Mine on it. And then over here, just another cookie cutter, one of my little statues. This kiss thing I had bought, oh goodness, a long, long time ago and it was actually a picture holder. It had those metal things with the swirl to hold pictures and I just pulled those out of the top. And then I have this antique book. It's called The Wedded Life. Um, it was actually a wedding gift that someone had given to us. My amber sand, another cookie cutter. I did make this cute little, so I think it's a five by seven um, board. And these are all materials I had at home. Book page hearts. These hearts are actually left over from my daughter's wedding. We used them on the tables as confetti. And then just red scrapbook paper punched with the same heart and I stamped love on there with some stamps I had. Apothecary, it's filled with little red hearts. Of course my birds. And here's my coffee service that I had purchased um, a while ago. And then over here, of course my birdhouse, my bird's nest. And then this little apothecary jar is just full of little stuffed hearts that I had made. So I hope you enjoyed my DIY video and my Valentine's Day decorations. Please subscribe, please leave comments, and I will see you in the next video.